All right, Shalom, Shalom, we back. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rukakadash. And uh, we, um, I'm Azmawa, once again. Got my brother. Brother Yerumya. Khan, yeah, we back again, man. Uh, continuing where we left off the uh, day before yesterday. Uh, we're doing the Passover series. The uh, day before yesterday, we did uh, Exodus chapter 3 which is a pretty uh, descriptive chapter. So uh, we just only covered one, but today we are we're gonna try to get through chapters four and chapters five, uh, you know, just letting the spirit lead. So we'll um, we'll start back from the top on chapter four. Let me uh, share my screen real quick. So this is Exodus four. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, remember, you know, if you got any precepts, bring them on out. Come, come, come. The book of Exodus, chapter four, and verse one. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, Yahweh have not appeared unto thee. Yeah, exactly, man. Right. So when we read through Exodus chapter three, that's what Moses had his his encounter with uh, with the angel of the Lord. All right, the angel of the Lord, um, you know, commissioned Moses. He he sent Moses unto uh, the children of the captivity, right? And um, so Moses got his got his mission um, from the Most High through that uh, through that angel through that messenger, right? Which would be none other than Yahweh Shah, which is the angel of the Lord. And now here in Exodus chapter four, verse one, once Moses, um, you know, got once he received that commission. Um, and he understood that the Lord was going to send him. You can read that again. Right? Okay. Um, verse one, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, mm -hmm. nor hearken unto my voice. Yeah. For and they so, was okay. And so that's the same, uh, <laughs> that's the same issue that we got today, man. Right. Our people, we didn't want to listen back then. Right. And we're not, they ain't sure not listening today, man. Right, the Lord once again has 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 risen up prophets before he he uh commits destruction in this earth in in the spiritual Egypt especially. Right, he's commissioned prophets on the scene to go warn his people. Right, but the same thing that our people uh cried back then, they're crying again today. Right, they're not gonna they don't believe the prophets. Right, but the Lord, as we continue to read, we're gonna find out that that's the way that the Lord wants it to be, man. Right. The Lord has always uh, basically set up his men to be uh, stumbling blocks, you know, for a lot of people. And it's literally going to take the Lord himself, man, right, through his son, Yahweh Shah, to show you who he is, right? Because man isn't good enough for you, right? We don't believe what comes out of man's mouth. We don't believe even the, the miracles that you see come from man, right? Because you're going to see, uh, I want to say in uh, Exodus chapter, um, chapter 6 and chapter 7, how uh, you had... You know, men on the left hand side, you know, in, in Pharaoh's court, you know, um, you know, trying to counteract or, or copy or mimic the same miracles that the men of the Lord did, right? Which which caused our people to to further be left in the region and be in confusion, right? But can you uh can you grab Ezekiel uh chapter three? Okay. All right, because here we see that our people didn't believe in uh in one of the first prophets that was given unto us, man. All right, same thing is happening today. And we can start at verse, um, we can start at verse one. Uh, shot. The book of Ezekiel chapter three and verse one. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this row. Yeah, eat this row. And, I mean, this, this, this book, this Bible, right? The yeah. words of the Lord, because it was written on a scroll. Or uh, in the ancient world, you'll call it a roll. But you go ahead. Yeah. And um, with thou finest, eat this row and go and speak unto the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eat this row, meaning eat the word of the Most High, right? Eat the word mm -hmm. of the Most High, which will be in, uh, embodied as Yahweh Shah because he is the word, right? And we do the same thing today. We teach what Yahweh Shah taught, man. And we go speak unto the house of Israel, All right? You go ahead. Verse two. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that row. Verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man, um, cause thy belly 
to eat and fill thy bowels with this roe that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Yeah, it was in my mouth for honey for sweetness, man. And that's as us brothers, man, we can we can attest to that. When you first come to this truth, it's a very sweet thing, you know, um, after you re first receive this word, right? Moses, you know, he wanted uh, he wanted to deliver his people. And it was a sweet thing, you know, what the, um, what the Most High was about to do through Moses. But as we're going to shortly realize that Moses, you know, he, he felt that bitterness, right? That goes along with it. You go ahead. Uh, verse, uh, verse three. And he said unto me, son of man, oh, so like in verse four. And he said unto me, he said unto me, son of man, go and get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Mm -hmm. Because when the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses uh, in that bush, he said that he put he put his words in Moses' mouth. All right, go ahead. Verse five. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech mm -hmm. and of a hard language but to the house of israel yeah so even though moses was brought up you know in pharaoh's courts you know speaking the tongue of of uh you know of the egyptians or whatnot he still knew the hebrew you know as his people so he wasn't speaking to a people that he couldn't um couldn't uh you know uh you know communicate with you know you go ahead Turn, turn it, and, and real quick, and, and just like linking it with today, like the most high God ain't sending us to a people that's of a strange language. Like we, you know, we got brothers that understand, you know, how to speak uh in Spanish, right? You know, for the northern kingdom brothers, or you know, yeah, I mean, we yeah, I mean, we we all come from the hood, so we all know, you know, ebonics, right? Right, we all know niggas slang. Mm -hmm. I mean, so the Lord ain't sending us to a people that we don't. You know that 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 the language is so hard for us to understand, even to this very day. Exactly. Come on, um, verse uh, verse verse six. Mm -hmm. Um, not to many people of a strange speech and of any hard language, those words thou canst not understand. Mm -hmm. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Yeah, go ahead. Verse seven, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. You see that? And Moses they... said the same thing. Let's go back. Right. <laughs> Exodus four and one. And Moses answered and said, "But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice." You know. You go ahead. Con, con. Um, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not um hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel is impotent and hard-hearted. Yeah, uh, impotent just basically means stiff-necked, man. You're stiff-necked. Pharaoh, you know, and modern-day Pharaoh has literally um, helped stiffen your neck, man. Because you're looking straightly onto them. You don't look into your power, man. All right, so it's, it's basically form your neck <laughs> to to uh, to keep some type of memory. You, if you consider like a, what you call it, like a electrical wires. If they stay in a particular position for a while, it's this thing called memory in them. And it, and it basically molds itself to that shape of whatever curve or bend it was in. And that's exactly how people's neck is. It's stiff neck because you're straightly looking upon, you know, some other uh, power, all right? And that's why Israel time and time again has been known as a stiff neck people. because they, they haven't been looking to the most high or to his prophets, man. Because the very fact that the Lord raises up a prophet for you that's literally the Lord giving you a peace offer, you know, because you think that the Lord's about to get off this throne, you know, and, and speak to you face to face. <laughs> well, first and foremost, you would implode, man, if you saw the most high God's face. Right. Mm -hmm. So the only way he can he can reach natural man, carnal man, is that he raises up somebody in the flesh just like him. All right. Now, of course, you know, uh, you know, we have we can find record of, you know, Daniel and, and other prophets, you know, um, you know, seeing angels, but for the for the common man, the Lord speaks to you, you know, in, in a fashion that, that you can relate to. He sends another man, you know, but that but that man is a carrier, he's a vessel, um, you know, for the most high God's words. And the very fact that the Lord has done that 
goes to show you that he's trying to redeem you out of the captivity or, or out of the situation that you're in and redeem you, particularly from the destruction that he's about to uh, cause, man. All right. But yeah, you keep going. Uh, um, in Ezekiel. Con. Uh, verse, verse eight. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces mm -hmm. and their foreheads strong against their forehead. Yep, and that's exactly what it took, man. <laughs> that's exactly what it, and it still takes today, right? Start, especially starting with Moses, man. You think it was an easy thing to, to lead, <laughs> to lead all those uh, so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans out of Egypt? Man, Moses had to have a stronger forehead than them, meaning he had to be uh, more uh, mentally fortified, all right? Because that's, that's, that takes a, that's a mental game, man. When you deal with a whole bunch of people, right? <laughs> Who don't want to be who got Stockholm syndrome? That's what it is. You're dealing with a whole bunch of people that got Stockholm syndrome. They they love their oppressor, but they hate the situation that they're in. But yet they they can't figure out how how they could get out of it, man. All right, and that's what ultimately it led back to. Because when you read the book the book of Numbers, uh, it talks about how our people they wanted to return back into Egypt, man. They wanted to return. You know, so dealing with the type of people like that. The Lord has to, uh, you know, fortify, fortify your mind and make your forehead stronger than theirs, or else you will crumble upon the upon the impressions of those people. You know, but yeah, you go ahead, Oa, uh, and Ezekiel. Yeah. Con, uh, verse verse nine. As a matter and of fact, as... you can skip down to uh to verse eleven. Con, verse eleven, and go and get thee to them. Of the captivity. There you have it. Until the yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go get thee to the captivity. All right, Moses went to yeah. the captivity. Look at us today. We he rose up some some prophets to the children of the captivity. Why? Because he's about to destroy the place that we we're captive at, and this time he's going to destroy uh, the two thirds of our people, who basically sided along with the side of uh, Esau with modern day Pharaoh. All right. And let's let's go ahead and get that just for edification's sake, because we've been quoting it. Um, in this case, we got some new believers listening. This is Revelation mm -hmm. eleven and eight, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. See that the great city. When you consider Revelation chapter eighteen and Revelation seventeen, you know uh, America is known as the great whore, or uh, or um, you or it's known as the great whore. All right. You know, uh, you can even hear the same sentiments being cried out, you know, by a lot of these, you know, white supremacists, you know, make America great again. Because you go into that word great, it basically um, exemplifies that pride. Pride uh, or great basically, basically means to be uh, big, to swell up. And that's what Esau is. He, he's big, he's swelled up, he's great. All right. So it's a great city, which spiritually, right? So this is a spiritual uh, overtone. It's not something physical which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And this is none other than America, all right? <clears throat> it's spiritually called Sodom. Why? Because, I mean, I shouldn't even have to break that down. We see exactly what Biden been doing the past, you know, uh, month or two, <laughs> you know, uh, homosexuality and pedophilia is, is at an all time high, right? Same things that was going on in Sodom, right? This is spiritually the land of Sodom and Egypt. Why Egypt? Because this is where our people was held in captivity, just like the physical land of Egypt, right? It says where also our Lord was crucified. Now, Yahweh wasn't physically crucified here, but spiritually he was, right? Through his people, through his men, right? Because we make up the body of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, right? He says, whatever you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me, all right? And also when you go into that word crucified, it means to be X'd out. And this is the place where uh, especially our Lord has been X'd out. His, his true image has been X'd out. His, the true doctrine has been X'd out. His people have been X'd out. They've been crucified, all right? And this is all happened right here in the spiritual land, Egypt or Sodom, also known as America, Babylon the Great. See that? Um, so yeah, we go back to Ezekiel. We'll finish that out in verse 11. Good. Um, and go and get thee to, the, to them of the captivity. Mm -hmm. Unto the children of thy people. Yeah, unto the children of thy people. Because the Lord is really giving this, this uh this message of warning unto us. Because what does he gotta warn? What does he gotta warn um 
although he, he does set up prophets to be uh, over in nations, you know, like you said, to Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all them, and even Moses, but the warning is specifically for Israel to preserve us because <laughs> the Lord already made up his mind on what he's going to do to the heathens, right? But right. Uh, it, he's basically given us prophets to preserve us. Right, because he in Romans chapter uh, two he says, "For God is not willing that any should perish, but all should uh, come unto repentance." All right, but you keep going. We we'll finish that out, Bible the show. Turn and speak unto them, and tell them, "Thus saith Yahweh, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear." Yeah, so you still got to speak unto them. Thus saith the Lord. Right, whether they listen or whether they don't listen. Right. <laughs> and that's exactly what Moses did, right? Even though he was timid in the beginning of uh, of, of his, um, uh, you know, state of being a prophet, you know, um, he, he still gave that message, man. You know, whether they listened or whether they didn't listen, man. Right? So we could go back uh, to Exodus 4 and 1. Bible shot. Yeah. Kind of look at Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1. And oh, Moses let me grab this one. Yeah, you go ahead. My bad. Uh, um, verse 1 and Moses answered and said but behold they will not believe me neither hearken unto my voice for they will say Yahweh have not appeared unto thee yep and once again man this has been a common theme for our people not believing the prophets and this is why we're in America right now <laughs> this is exactly why because we didn't listen to the true prophets we always told the true prophets listen Get away from us, right? Don't speak unto us, uh, uh, you know, rough things. Speak unto us smooth things. Well, look what that has landed us. Back again in captivity. Now the Lord, once again, is raising up prophets. And two-thirds of our people still don't want to listen. This is 2nd Ezra 7, verse uh, 59. For this is a life where Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, choose thee life. That thou mayest live. And what's that life? John 6 and 63. Yeah, how I shall say that the, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Verse 60. Nevertheless, they believe not him, nor yet the prophets after him. No, nor me, which I have spoken unto them. See that? So our people never believe uh the prophets, man. Right? But mm -hmm. you believe in the prophets is how you would uh succeed, which is how you would thrive. Let me grab that. Second Chronicles 20 and 20, he says, and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tokea. All right, and this goes to show the very fact that they're rising up early in the morning, all right, goes to show that they're true watchmen, man. All right, because watchmen right, they're yeah. set on watches different times of the day, you know, start in the morning and you got an afternoon watch and you got an evening watch, you know? He says, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord, your God. Okay, so you have a Christian say, okay, I believe in the Lord, all right? But it don't just stop in you, stop with you just believing in the Lord, right? It gets even more particular. It says, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. That's how you truly believe in the Lord. You believe his prophets, all right? <laughs> And, and that's and that's always been a stumbling block for Israel, right? We want to bypass the prophets and we want to speak face to face with God. You know, well, God told me this. Well, God is speaking unto you right now personally through the mouth of his prophets. That's how he's always spoken unto us, man. Grab this one last precept. It's Hebrews 1 and 1. God or Yahweh, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, so different times and different ways, this is how he spake spake in times past unto the fathers mm -hmm. by the prophets see the prophets they're the mouthpiece of the most high right you know because <laughs> if you if you really heard the the voice of the lord man all right this earth would tremble all right yeah. didn't, didn't they say it was like thunderstorms right uh angel was talking exactly bro I I got a uh, one precept. It's uh um it's Stephen um in the book of Acts. Okay. Um, Acts chapter seven verse fifty one. Ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit. 
mm. as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not um, your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them with slew, um, with slew before uh, a show before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. So our people always been betraying and murdering and butchering the, uh, the prophets, man. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact. That reminds me of this precept, Second Chronicles 36, 16. It says, I'm going to start at uh, 36. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I use uh, that joint a lot. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He says, and your how of power of their father sent to them by his messengers. See that? This is how he sends, right? <laughs> by his messengers. Just like the angel of the Lord, which just simply means messenger. Rising up betimes. When you go into that word betimes, it means diligently, man. Yeah. All right? This goes to show you the, the, the nature of a true prophet. They're diligent in their pursuit in turning Israel back into their power. All right? They don't take a, 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 you know, a month off, you know? He says, and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. And this is the ultimate reason why he's, he sends prophets for Israel. Cause like we stated earlier, because he really has compassion upon his people and that particular land that he chose to, um, to dig out for us, which would be Israel. He says, but they mocked the messengers of Yahweh and despised his words and misused the prophets. How did they misuse the prophets, man? They mocked them, right? They uh they don't uh they take light of their sacrifice, you know, giving it to the prophets. You think hey Moses could have done anything he wanted. Moses was when you consider uh the life of Moses, you know, he was dwelling in the courts of a, a Pharaoh. He could have continued to, you know, get higher and higher up in rank. You know, but as Hebrews chapter 11 says, it says that Moses, you know, left, you know, um, left basically. Let me grab that real quick. That's that's real good, man. Hebrews 11. Con. Uh, Hebrews 11. And uh, what, 26 or 24? Uh, yep. Yep, that's it. Uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, when Moses, he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And why was that? Well, if you were called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, that means that you that came with some type of prestige and some type of honor. Right. Yeah. Well, Moses refused that. All right, you go ahead. Okay, verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High. Ooh, and it was all done through faith. Moses chose rather to, to, to leave the courts of Pharaoh, to leave that favor, that luxurious lifestyle, right? And he chose to, you know, uh, to suffer the affliction with his people, man. Right? But like Second Chronicles chapter 36 says that uh, the, the prophets, they were misused, man. Our people didn't appreciate that. They didn't, they didn't take that rap for him, man. You know, they're like, man, they, they ratted him. They wanted to rat him out when he killed that Egyptian. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Our, our people. Yep, he said, yeah, you go ahead. It's a lot uh, Come, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Yep, the sin, right? The pleasures of sin is just for a season, right? But with you having the, the riches of Yahweh Shah, that's for eternity. You go ahead. Okay, uh, uh, verse 26. Um, esteeming the reproach of Hamashiach greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Ooh. Bro, the reproaches mm -hmm. of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, that's Bro, that's more richer than the, the so-called treasures in Egypt, right? And let, let's fast forward this to a modern day uh, time. Well, the treasures that the brothers are, are, are building up right now, you know, by, um, by making their life as a living sacrifice through faith, right? And, and suffering the reproaches, you know, of Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, whether that may be, you know, them, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, being ridiculed by their people, being ridiculed by their family, friends, and, you know, ex-coworkers or whatever. Well, those are greater riches, man, right? Than you living in America, you know, got an 800 credit score, 
you know, and you got, you know, $20,000 saved up or whatever. You know, <laughs> well, you suffering for, with your people is much better than you living luxurious with, with Babylon. All right, you go ahead. Kind of, for he had respect unto the, unto, um, unto the recompense of the reward. Yeah, recompense basically means to be paid back. Right, so Moses, through faith, he understood that the Lord isn't going to be uh, like Hebrews chapter six says. The Lord isn't uh, uh, unrighteous to forget your labor of love. Right, so Moses knew that he was going to get paid back, but it had to be through faith, just like me and this brother right here. Now we don't mm -hmm. physically see, you know, what I'm saying any manifestation of the Lord paying us back. You know, we don't even have that mind state as, as if He should, but through faith right. we hope for it. You know, we mm -hmm. hope that we'll be, you know, compensated back. It would be beautiful, but we understand that, you know, at the end of the day, this is the most high God's program, man, right? He's going to give, uh, he's going to have mercy on whoever he wants to have mercy on. But it's that's why Hebrews 11, 23 started with what? By faith, by faith, Moses did this, 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 and that, you know? So all this thing, this, this heritage of ours was built off of faith. Consider our forefather Abraham, right? <laughs> this is why we're, we're known as the greatest people to the day. Because he was a man of faith. The most high God told him to leave his 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 uh, birthplace and to leave his family. And he had faith in it. So much to the point to where he's about to kill his only son. All right. So we got to continue to keep that keep that legacy alive and well. You know, because Sirach says that a man is known through his children. You know? Uh, so yeah, let's keep going up. Can, uh, uh, what's it? Verse 27, huh. by faith, he forsook Egypt, by not faith. fearing it. Woo, by faith, he forsook Egypt, man. It takes faith to, to, to actually forsake Babylon, to forsake America, to forsake the spiritual Egypt. Why? Because you may have, you know, had a, a brother may have had a, a white collar job, man, making six figures a year. You know, but he but along with that, he may have been exploiting his people, charging his people interest or whatever, whatever his occupation is or you know, whether or he would have, you know, been selling dope or anything. Well, it took faith for you to forsake that lifestyle and now to uh, partake of the reproach of Hamashiach. All right. So even even took Moses a level of faith, you know, um, to, to forsake Egypt. You go ahead, though. Huh? Kind of not fearing the wrath of the king, mm -hmm. for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Ooh, as seeing him who is invisible as like hebrews chapter 4 it says no i want to say hebrews chapter 12 it says looking unto him the author and finisher of our faith which be how we we haven't physically laid bodily eyes upon him but yet in spirit we believe all right and uh as a matter of fact the rest of this chapter i'm pretty sure through the spirit uh the further we get into exodus we're going to revisit this chapter in uh hebrews 11 because it goes into that mm -hmm. he kept the passover and all that, but for um, stay on track for today's lesson, we'll go back to uh, Exodus four, Baba Kasha, Unless you got a point. Oh no, no. Um, kind of Exodus four and verse two, and Yahweh uh, said unto him, "What is that in thy hand?" And he said, "A rod." There you have it. All right. So, <laughs> well, let's just think. You know what Moses's occupation was? He was a shepherd. Every shepherd got a staff, got a rod in his hand. All right, to do what? To 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 lead the sheep. All right, let's grab this and uh, because this this truth of ours will actually be considered a rod. All right, because this is how the Lord leads us. This is Psalms twenty three verse four. He says, "Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which would be Egypt, which would be America, because this land is a valley of the shadow of death. When you consider a valley, it's a low land." America is definitely a low land. Maybe not physically, but spiritually it is. And morally, it's very low. All right? <laughs> they have no morals here. It's a low, it's a valley. And it says, of the shadow of death. And that's another thing that America is, is a shadow of death. Death encompasses it, man. Right? Sin is on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. He says, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. See that? Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Right, when you consider a staff, it, is, it symbolizes what? A support system, 
All right? What what is it? Uh, what do you do whenever you get tired? You know, especially in the ancient world, you would lean upon the staff for support. Right? Well, what supports us? The words of Yahweh, why Yahweh shot. That's why. Uh. That's it. Let's grab this in Isaiah thirty six and six. So this is that rod is is uh, symbolic unto uh, this truth or Yahweh Shah, the power that he gives us. It's Isaiah 36 and 6. He says, Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. So the Lord has a staff on the right hand side and on the left hand side. All right. Egypt was a staff for our people uh, uh, today, you know, to basically ensnare those who don't truly believe in the words of Yahweh Shah. You go into that word staff, it just simply means power structure, man. They, they, they rely and they lean upon the power structure of Egypt. It says, we're on if a man lean, right? So it, when you lean upon this power structure of Egypt to get support, it will go into his hand and pierce it, eventually lead him to the mark of the beast. <laughs> when you lean upon America, it's eventually going to bite your ass in the butt, man. Right? And it's going to go into your hand by that form of the mark of the beast. It says, so is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. See that? So leaning upon the staff is symbolic unto you trusting in a particular uh, power. All right? That's why the Most High asked Moses, what's this in your hand? He says, a rod. Okay, well, this goes to show you that uh, he's going to use his rod to support the sheep, to lead the sheep. Because with that rod, he did many uh, miraculous works. You know, splitting the Red Sea. You know, he cast it down. Well, the next verse is about to uh, let you know. So, yeah, so, yeah let's, let's, unless you got a point, we can pick back up. Uh, verse 3 and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fleed from before it mm -hmm. come verse 4 and Yahweh said unto Moses put forth thy hand hold on and <laughs> hold on the verse 3 says that uh he cast it up on the ground all right the most I told him to cast that rod up on the ground and Moses fled for he got timid man Right, Moses was at in, in the beginning of his ministry. He was a, he was timid. You know, I, I know that freaked me out too, man. Right, but right. as you as you consider, um, you know, the the life of Moses and, and, and him growing into his ministry, you see him waxing bolder and bolder and bolder and bolder. So much to the point to where he split the Red Sea. Hey, that is, <laughs> he didn't flee from that. You know, Moses, I told him to put that rod and staff and see where the part. He stood. Confident, man, because he, he got used, you know, to that power and get used to it, man, because guess what? The same way how the Lord gave uh, the prophets of them power, right? Here in the near future, he's about to give his men power, whoever they may be. Lord willing, we're part of that number, but you best believe he's going to raise up some prophets, man, that's going to have that power once again. Right now, they may, hey, you may have a brother that's just now coming to his truth and he's timid, man, right? But like Zechariah, says that uh that the most feeble amongst them shall be as david you know you're gonna you're gonna get bold you're gonna get strengthened in his truth and we can see uh how moses at first he, you know he was kind of timid you know he fled from the from the face of that uh from that serpent all right and uh let's grab this in luke right because we got to remember that those who yahweh why yahweh shot sins just like he sinned moses he's going to give us that power man this is uh, Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. See that? <laughs> so right then, Moses was, you know, a little timid. And right now, we got some brothers that's timid. You know, but the Lord is going to give us that power to tread on those serpents, man. All right? Physically and spiritual serpents. Even Esau, because he's a serpent. That great, that old serpent of old, man. He says, and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. See that? And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And the Lord gave Moses that confidence and that boldness, you know, uh, as he um, was furthering in his ministry. But yeah, you go ahead, though. Okay. Uh, come, verse 4. And Yahweh said unto Moses, put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Mm -hmm. uh, verse verse five that they 
may believe yeah. that Yahweh. Because this is how people gonna believe, man. <laughs> when they see something, man. Moses right. is walking up to his people and said, hey, the Lord told me to free y'all. You think that would be enough for our people? No. Yeah. Our people need some type of proof, some type of evidence, man. All right, well, show us the power that, that he gave you. All right? And this is why we've been known as an evil and adulterous generation. This is Matthew 12 and 39. He says, but he answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign <laughs> and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of what the prophet jonas see that that's the only that's the only sign that the lord gonna give us especially now hey i'm not gonna show you all these miracles the only sign you're gonna see that i'm dealing with y'all i'm gonna raise up a man that looks just like you a brother that was brought up in the same school and same neighborhood as you right a brother who used to sling dope like you but now he's a prophet all right that's the only sign you're gonna get is a, a lifestyle change from this brother all right you're not gonna see you know uh, uh brothers right now splitting seas and walking on water and you know that will happen eventually because he says uh, the works i uh, i do greater work shall you do but right now he ain't doing that right now this is the greatest sign that our people will see brothers actually uh making videos and making sense of the bible <laughs> and and if you think about it that's that's actually you know that's actually more powerful because like he took the, the low from this earth without a degree you know without master's degrees and you know some brothers you know probably do got degrees but you got some brothers who who probably don't even got the uh uh the credentials the, even the gds like you got certain brothers that just basically just you know just barely just 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 coming off the streets like how you said and then and then now they they've been able to confound people that's been wise in this world so it's like he do it so he can be credited for that because you can't get a credit you know to harvard you can't get a credit to the temple or right? you can't get a credit to these ivy league schools so you got to give it to the heavenly father because where where did this 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 regular uh joe blow dude <laughs> could get the uh, understanding right that's a fact that's a fact huh? Yeah, man, because the Lord, he said in Isaiah, he says, my glory shall I not give unto another. You know, when you yeah. consider those pastors and those, you know, apologists, they always say, well, yeah, man, well, well, this seminary school taught me this, taught me that. Well, our brothers are saying right now, well, you know, the Spirit showed me this. You know, of course, that the Lord gave us, you know, apostles, apostles and elders and, you know, uh, brothers who was more seasonal with this thing. But who do they get it from? The Holy Spirit. Right. You know? You know, but those those colleges, you know, and those seminary schools, they got it from inheritance lies, man, from Gentile. You know, but and people are giving credit unto them, giving credit unto men and not to the most high. This is why we always start off every single lesson with what? <laughs> giving honor and glory. Giving honor and glory unto the most high, his son and the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. This, is, this is where the information came from. It's been in the front of our face the whole time. All right, this is uh, Hebrews 2 and 4. He says, uh, Yahweh also bearing them witness, right, both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles. See that? So this is another reason why <clears throat> Yahweh did this uh, did this sign and wonder and a miracle before Moses and before the children of Israel, right, in the land of their captivity, right, to bear them witness that, yes, I'm, I'm doing this. This is me. Right. And, and brothers coming into this truth, man, the Lord bore us witness, you know, through the spirit. Like Romans 8 and 16 says that the spirit bears witness that we are the children of the Lord. Right. And, and the spirit, you know, what I'm saying it may not always be some type of, you know, a supernatural encounter or whatever. You know, it's something as subtle as you, you know, being diligent in this thing. You you being possessed, man. Like you can't help it. This is your yeah. lifestyle, man. That's just. <laughs> That's a spirit bearing witness with you, man. Like you can't help it. You couldn't leave this even if you wanted to, man. Con, con, you you go to sleep thinking about it. You exactly. wake up thinking about it. Con. You eat and you thinking about it. Yep. Watching TV, you thinking about it. Yep. That's a spirit bearing witness, man. Right? Because the Lord, hey, he wants to really, he really wants, he could have easily 
he could easily man manifest any type of supernatural thing unto us and you know make us believe right but what is he wanting from us today something that he never truly got from us faith right faith and he's going to get that faith out of his elect men before he sends his son back man he's going to get it because even in the law in Deuteronomy chapter 32 he says children in whom is no faith <laughs> he wrote that in his law man <laughs> right but he's going to get that faith bro all right, kind of, kind of, and Salakia too. Like, like this is why this generation got to believe in faith because the old generation they had the miracles, right? They had the signs, and they still didn't believe. Mm. So yeah, you know I mean, so so we got to believe in faith. You know what I mean, and more than likely, a lot of us is that same generation. Ooh. So you know what I mean, so that's this is why we got to believe in faith. Uh, and I believe through the spirit, bro. We are we we that same generation, bro. We just, yeah, I, yeah. I truly believe that, man. Cause just look at our people, you know, hard hit it is is all out, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, man. He says God, Yahweh, also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to His own will. See that? And gifts of the Holy Spirit, cause this is another way how you know you know that the Lord is dealing with you. He gives you a particular. He gives a brother a particular gift. It may be the gift of, uh, you know, uh, uh, extra charity. You know, some brothers are, you know, they got that gift of charity. You know, they got a, 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 um, a gift of, uh, you know, uh, edifying the saints or whatever it may be, man. Right. But that's a gift that the Lord has given you, you know, all for the embitterment and the uh, edification of our people. But, um, but yeah, we can go back to Exodus uh, okay. 4 verse, uh, verse 5. Yeah. Uh, the book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 5 that they may believe that Yahweh power of their fathers and the power of Abraham and the power of Isaac and the power of Jacob have appeared unto thee uh -huh. verse 6 and Yahweh said furthermore unto him put now thy hand into thy bosom and, and put um, and he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Yeah. So, and this is also a, a cut, you know, on on those damn Christians, man, who just um, cannot fathom, you know, Moses or the children of Israel, you know, being people of color, man. Right. <clears throat> well, the Lord just told him to put his hand in his bosom, right. And he pulls it out and it's going to be leprous. Leprous basically means white, man. Right? So if it, if it was showing a, a, that much of a contrast, what did it show you? He had color into him, man. Right? And he's about to explain it even more. Go ahead. John, uh, as leprous, as leprous as snow. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 7. And he put it, and he put, um, and he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. Yeah, so now, put his now, Moses, put your hand, you know, back in, in, in underneath your cloak. Go ahead. Back into your bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it turned again as his other flesh. Yeah, it turned again as his other flesh. It turned back dark skin. It turned back to his regular flesh. Because when you go to uh, Exodus 2 and 19, right, um, Moses was... No, uh, uh, thought of to be a, as an Egyptian, and we all know Egyptian oh, black. <laughs> you see, so he turned back being a, a brown skinned man. All right, so go to show you that you know, uh, you know the leader of children of Israel. You know he was he was he was a brown skinned man, right? So, so like, where where was the uh, where where the uh, scripture where um the Lord turned um Miriam um lepers? That's in Numbers, right? Uh, yeah, Numbers 12, I, I believe. Let me yeah. see. 12. Yeah, yeah, it's 12. Okay, fine. Okay. Kind of, um, the book of Numbers, chapter 12 and verse 10. And the cloud departed from um off the tabernacle, and behold, Marius became lepers, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was lepers. So you know, this this goes to show this Moses' sister, right? So yeah, I mean, so I mean, this goes to show like they just not just both just turning lepers, 
Mm-hmm. Right? They 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 weren't this way originally. Right? So th- this shows that they had to have been people of color. Um, verse 11, and Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us, wherein we had done foolishly, and wherein we had sinned. Um, verse 12, let her not be as one dead, right? So hmm. Aaron, Moses' brother, was like, listen, yeah, I mean, don't let our sister look like these walking dead people. Like, he was comparing the Edomites, or what we would call today as Caucasians, right, as being the walking dead, hmm. right? Like the TV show. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, man. So our people, you know, I was like people of color. We got different shades of brown, you know, uh, right. skin, you know, because uh, you know, consider our Native American. I mean, uh, consider you know the Latinos. They are people, you know. When you look at uh, you know the walls of Egypt or whatever, you know, it was depicted, you know, the children of Israel, you know, all different types of shade of brown, man. Huh? You know, right, right, right. Like brown, right. dark brown, jet black. You know, because you gotta remember, man. Hey, the Lord, the Lord is diverse. The Lord is diverse. Mm-hmm. And- and, you know, uh, even, you know, with the captivity that we just went through, you know, and us being in Babylon so long, Babylon just makes, the, it means confusion. Um, you know, our people, they may have uh, taken on the appearance of the other nations, you know. But, yeah, they, that's so, yeah. You know, you know, so the Lord isn't restricted, you know, to your looks. That's why we don't preach or teach uh, always looks, you know, but we do emphasize it, you know, because for so long, we, we've been whitewashed, you know? So now that's why we harp upon it. But uh, we understand that the Lord, he's not, you know, he, you know, he, we got people that look all different type of ways, man. You got some brothers that look like Edomites and you got some brother who look like they Israelites, but they actually Edomites, you know? Right, 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 right. We've seen that in New York. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it was his brother's chocolate covered Edomite. He, you really would have thought he was a brother. See but that? we knew he wasn't because he was talking about, you know, that he helped, uh, that he helped, you know, black people. And so he wasn't even concerning himself a black person. It's like, even though his skin was dark, he was like, uh, I help black people, you know, um, I give them shoes, basically his used shoes. Wow. Wow. Right, right, right. We're going to need more than that, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And your spirit going to show it too, man. You know, especially now, the closer we get to the end of time, hey, the, the spirit of these people are really being manifested, you know? Uh, that's why the best way to really go off of, especially in this dispensation, man, is through the spirit. You know, that's why, um, you know, when you consider the acts of the apostles and, you know, all of them, well, the same thing basically happened to them as well. They got scattered into distant, different lands, you know, mixing what's going on. But that's why the, the Holy Spirit was uh, emphasized a lot, especially in Acts, because that's how the people of Israel were drawn back together through all through the spirit, you know? Um, so Exodus 4 and up. Uh, hold on, I gotta use the restroom to lock you, man. I've been drinking some water, but uh you can you can you can go into it and break it down. I'll be right back. Um, kinda, yeah, I, I just got this uh precept I'm gonna bring out because you know we was already talking about uh color and yeah, and this is why we don't you know uh um put so much emphasis on colors, right? Right, other camps probably do, but our camp in particular, um Sakari, we don't put that much emphasis on it because we understand that the Lord's people could come looking Asian, you know, could come looking Caucasian, could come looking at any type of a uh, race, you know, um, today, because, you know, we, 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 we're, we're in captivity under all nations. So not only are we going to take on, right. Um, right. Not only are we going to take on, you know, a lot of their customs, you know, and be Gentiles, in, in that mind state, but also, you know, we end up uh, looking like them, you know, through mating with their women or whatnot. But, but you know, but we also uh, teach that we um, chiefly or mainly should deal with our, our own uh, people, right? Our own, uh, our own sisters, right? As uh, being brothers and especially for sisters, because sisters, you know, if you deal with a heathen, I mean, like, you, you, you know, you pretty much damning you know your child was going to come come out of you so i mean it, it definitely works more in your your interest to to be with your your own right i mean 
I mean, unless you, you know, see your kid in slavery. Hmm. But um <laughs> imagine going through all that, that childbirth pains and everything, just to know that your kid gonna go in slavery, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave birth to a slave. Damn. Yeah, sis, sis, sisters better choose these brothers, and it's a lot of brothers out here, man. You better choose these brothers, man. Really? I mean, hey, man. And, and 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 even if a sister got that brother, man, the Lord dealing with that brother, you you, you bet. Just like Isaiah four and one, I mean, we don't care about that. Just just uh just you know to um to hold back our reproach, right? I mean, we'll we'll be called by His name, right. but um get, uh to get into this because um we were just talking about the Lord, you know, um that all all of our people because the Lord put us in all these different countries. And all these different captivities, so we can look like other nations, right? Um, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12 and verse 9. My inheritance is unto me like a speckled bird. Right? The birds around about are against her, right? And then as and you know, they are these other nations, these other birds, they they all against us. And a speckled bird, when you look it up, is a multicolored bird. Right, it's not it's not one particular blue or red. It's, it has multiple colors on it. So the Lord says that's what He likens His His inheritance to. Hmm. It's a fact. It's a fact. Okay, uh, go, go 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 back in Exodus. Oh, Khan, Khan. If you was done in your point. Uh, Khan. Okay, Khan. Um, it's the Book of Exodus, chapter chapter four, and verse seven, and He put. Uh, oh no, I've read uh, I've read seven verse verse eight, and it came to pass, and it um, and it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee nor hearken to the voice of the first sign, the first because the Jews right. require what the Jews require a sign, All right? Look, right. <laughs> look at that real quick. It's first Corinthians, what was that? I want to say one, uh huh. First Corinthians one and uh, here you go, twenty two. I'm sorry, verse twenty one. For after that, in the wisdom, we're gonna grab this chapter again. Let's be uh, get further down. It says for after that, in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God or Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching. When you go into that word preaching, it literally means to prophesy. All right, pre means before. And, and, and chur or ching basically means to uh, to say. So you're saying something beforehand, which would be what? Prophesying. So it pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of prophesying or preaching to save them that believe. This is what prophecy was set up for, to say, save them that believe, not those who don't believe, all right? It says, for the Jews require what? A sign. <laughs> the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. And so our people who who basically um, been Hellenized or colonized in their minds, they became these Greeks, they became these Americans, right? And America uh, uh, loves to uh, pride itself in the uh, <clears throat> in their forefathers and their wisdom, right? And so our people who who basically became Greeks, they seek they seek after wisdom, right? Pseudo science or pseudo wisdom, which would also be known as philosophy, but a lot of the the Israelites that require a sign. All right, we'll go back to uh, Exodus 1. Let me Exodus, oh, Exodus 4. Con, verse 8. Con, um, Exodus 4 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee nor hearken um, to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and and just to add a, um a point on real quick, um you know, cause um my mom she used to be big on watching these uh biblical movies, you know, through uh Christianity and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the um the movie the Ten Commandments, um they had Charles um Hester, I believe it was, was his name that played Moses. Oh, you know, the funny, the yeah yeah the the funny part about this movie, well you know, not even the fact that it had. Um, that they were showing in the back of the movie, they they were showing um in the background, they were showing black uh slaves that was in Egypt on the walls, like on the walls. If you look on the walls, 
they was in Egypt. They, it showed black slaves that was on the wall. So they, they were showing that they weren't even white people, but the people that was playing Israelites were white people. But but if you if we see this, it says, it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, nor hearken unto the voice of what? The first sign, what was the first sign? Him turning his staff into a serpent, mm. right? And that was played out in the movie, right? Um, Aaron took his staff and put it down in front of Pharaoh and it turned into a, a serpent, right? And then um, um, Pharaoh and his, um, you know, sorcerers, they 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 use witchcraft and they they turn, you know, they staffs into serpents. But you see how it said, if they won't believe the first sign, surely they will believe the latter sign. What was the latter sign? Him putting his hand into his bosom, which Charles and Hester couldn't do in that movie because he was a Caucasian. Ooh. So he couldn't perform that, that miracle so they just said, basically, you know, we don't got enough time. Let's just have the one miracle there. Wow. Like, this, this is what they do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Damn. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. You see, yeah, man? I was a kid watching that. But until when you come into a better understanding, you're like, hold up. Why they didn't have this in the movie? Like, yeah. why, why was it multiple signs? And they, they did it like it was only one sign the Lord gave them. Dang. See that, man? Hey, their own works condemn them, man. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> oh, yeah, the lack, the lack. <laughs> the lack of. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind, God. Kind of. Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, kind of verse 9. And it shall come to pass, Um, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also, these um these two sons neither hearken unto thy voice that thou shalt take the water of the river and pour it upon dry land and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon dry land yeah you go uh, verse 10 uh, verse 10 and Moses said unto Yahweh O oh, Yahweh I am not, what's this? Eloquent. eloquent. Mm -hmm. I'm not eloquent, neither, neither here, here to for, nor um, since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Yeah, let's go into the word eloquent real quick. Is it mm -hmm. eloquent? The bar. Says, um, not eloquent in words, utterance. Let me see something real quick. Yeah, it's not eloquent to speak <clears throat> or to be conversant or to declare, warn, threaten, promise. Right? In my, um, yeah. So basically, he wasn't a man of, you know, uh, words, you know, uh, he wasn't a man of words. And that's the same thing, you know, with a lot of us. You know, yeah. uh, especially when you, you know, first get started, you know, because you got to remember Moses was just first getting started, man. He wasn't, you know, eloquent. He wasn't, you know what I'm saying, very conversant in, uh, you know, in what, what, whatever message that was he had to portray. Hey, but this is how the Lord set it up. This is how he set it up. And this is how he set it up once again, even today. Right. He set up brothers who, uh, who may not be, you know, the, the best of speakers or whatever. You know, because I myself, I know that I had trouble speaking a lot of the times, you know, but guess what? This is all in, in, in the way of the Lord basically uh, weeding out those who's depending upon man's wisdom. Whoever, right. sounds good, whoever, <laughs> whoever it sounds like they got the best breakdown. They may be lying their ass off to you, but they sound good. Look at T.D. Jakes. <laughs> yeah, real smooth, real smooth with it. You got to give it to the brother, man. The dude can, man, hey. He can speak to you real good, but he's lying to you the whole time. What would you rather, a, a man to uh, to lie to you and stutter while, uh, I mean, and, and speak smooth while he do it, or a brother to tell you the straight up honest truth and may be harsh right. with it, may stutter with it, you know, or, you know, well, hey man, give me the truth. All right, let's grab this. Yeah. <laughs> let's grab this real quick. And uh, First Corinthians. Two and twenty-six. It says, 
I'm gonna start at verse one. It says, and I, brethren, this is Paul too. When I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. So even when Paul came, man, he didn't come with excellency of speech or wisdom, you know? He's about to declare unto you why. Declaring unto you the testimony of Yahweh, right? This is how he came unto you, declaring the testimony of Yahweh. And what's the testimony of Yahweh? Well, Revelation 19.10, the spirit of prophecy. He says, for I determined not to know anything among you, what? Except Yahweh Shah Hamashiach and him crucified. See that? So we only determined to, to tell you the truth, not by wisdom or excellently a, a speech. All right, we're just going to tell you straight up, thus saith the Lord. All right, we're going to tell you the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. All right, and I'm going to skip down to, uh, yeah, I'm going to skip down to verse uh, four. Uh, well, I might as well keep reading. It says verse three, and I was with you, and I was with you in weakness and in fear, and in much trembling. All right, because the, the the servants of the Lord, they're gonna be with the sheep, man, in in every uh in every manifold um you know temptation, whether it may be in weakness or fear or much trembling. He says, and my speech and my preaching, see that was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. See that. It wasn't with enticing words of man's wisdom. You know, when we, you know, when I, when brothers, you know, do sit down lessons or teach on the street corners or or just talk to somebody on Walmart or talk to their family member, they might get choked up on their words. But guess what? We're not trying to entice you with, with man's wisdom and man's words, right? Because this is something much more larger than ourselves, man. And the Lord also does that to remove pride from man. Because imagine if a brother can go through, you know what I'm saying, a prophecy and, you know, history and all these things and be eloquent with it. You know, if, if the spirit ain't dealing with that man, that man would be puffed up in his pride. You know, so, so this is one, mecha one mechanism or, or, or means of way how the Lord keeps that vessel humble to remind him that he ain't shit, <laughs> you know? He says, but he says, and my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men see that and that's the reason why so your faith right your belief won't stand in the wisdom of of, of, of this man breaking down the scripture to you uh, uh enticingly man you know he says but in the power of yahweh see that so moses he didn't have that eloquent speech man he didn't have uh, man's wisdom, but he did carry what? The power of the Most High. He could show you signs. <laughs> he could split the Red Sea. He says, verse 6, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to not. See that? Because you had uh, Pharaoh's uh, magicians. They had wisdom on the left-hand side. And you got America. You got Babylon. They got your scientists, you know what I'm saying? Your astronauts, your, your, your doctors. Well, that's wisdom of this world, man, right? But he says that that's going to come to naught, meaning come to nothing. It's vanity, right? Because the Lord is always going to confound. He's like he says in the same chapter. He confounds the, the um, he confounds the, confounds the wise with the base, <laughs> with the base man. He used a shepherd, man, to confound men who were brought up in the wisdom of, of, of Egypt. He used a man, a, a lowly man, a shepherd. Verse seven, but we speak the wisdom of Yahweh and a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. See that? So yeah, we'll go back to Exodus, right? So this, we, just, we just got that to show how this was the Lord's design, man, to use a man that wasn't uh, very eloquent in speech just so he can confound the wise. So the wise can see that this man, this is none other than Yahweh, man. All right, because when brothers, you know, who who uh some brothers who may have dropped out of school or who didn't even have a because I didn't go to college, you know what I'm saying? I didn't learn how to, you know, put lessons together or any nobody had to teach me this, but it was through the spirit. Yeah. You know, but but now we through the spirit and power of Yahweh while Yahweh is shy, all right, we confound the wise. And it may not be with enticing words either. But guess what? They ain't got no damn answer to what. Just a simple fact. Does God hate? All right? <laughs> hey, we ask you, does God hate? 
and you tell us no, or we just show you one scripture and your ass confound it. <laughs> All right. What is that? Yeah, what is it? Well, let me show you, man. All right. <laughs> so yeah, man. So so the prophets, man, they they always felt like they were inadequate for the job at hand. Let me get one last one. This is Jeremiah 1 and 6. Then said I, ah, Yahweh power. I behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. See that? So even Jeremiah said the same thing, man. I'm a child. I can't speak. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm a teenager, man. I'm a little, I'm a little boy. You know, but the Lord, this is how the Lord, man. Hey, the Lord loves to get that glory. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. We can go back to Exodus four and eleven. Come, come. The book of Exodus chapter four. In verse 11, and Yahweh said unto him, Who have made man's mouth? He's, so basically, most I was asking him a, a rhetorical question Man, who made man's mouth? Right? <laughs> who made your mouth? Let me grab this real quick. Yeah. Well, you keep reading, Noah. Uh, kind. Or who maketh the dumb? Mm -hmm. Or deaf? Or deaf? Or the seeing, or the blind, mm -hmm. have not I Yahweh? Yeah. So the Lord made all these things, right? He made man's mouth. He made a man who can speak eloquent. He made a man who can speak uh, 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 with with, with uh, a hard language. He made a man deaf. He made a man who can listen. All right. Let me grab this once again. First Corinthians. I'm getting an NLT real quick. Starting at verse twenty six. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.26 NLT says, remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when Yahweh called you. See, look at Moses, right? He says, instead, Yahweh chose things the world considers foolish, right? It was a foolish thing to be known as a shepherd. It was a foolish thing for, for, for brothers, you know, working at McDonald's or whatever. Imagine that. Imagine that a prophet that work at McDonald's. <laughs> right? It's something to laugh at. It's something to laugh at. Well, this is what it says that the Lord chose. It says, instead, Yahweh chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. See that? You got a brother that work at McDonald's and he's confounding a, 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 a Negro who's been or Edomite who's been preaching in the church for 20 years, who went to see a seminary school, who graduated from Harvard or whatever, all right? He says, and he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. See that? Yahweh chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. And who's the greatest example of that, man? Yahweh shot. Yahweh Shah came in very humble, man. Right? Born in a manger. Born in something that, that, that animals are born in. He was actually born in a feeding trough, man. Right? <laughs> well, who would have ever considered that, you know, or that man to be the king of the world? All right? Verse 29, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of Yahweh. And that's the reason why. So the wise man who boasted his glory and it came to not... He can't boast no more. And the brother who was brought up in a uh, in a humble fashion, but knew that the spirit of the Lord was dealing with him, he can't boast either, man. So, so what can we conclude from this? Or well, the Lord is simply is going to get his glory, man. All right from it all. One way or another. One way or another. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 31. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, Boast only about your hour. See that? Mm. So yeah, we yeah. First Corinthians. Kind yeah, that was for, yeah. We'll go back to uh, Exodus four. Uh, Exodus four, and and verse and verse uh, verse twelve. Now therefore go, and I will be with um with thy mouth, and I and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee. What thou shalt say. Yeah, so the Lord, he's going to send you and he's going to be with your mouth. What does it mean to be with a man's mouth? 
basically means he's going to prepare. He's going to prepare what you say. Let me see if I can find something real quick. Yep. Yep, he's going to be with your mouth. This is Proverbs 16, verse 1. He say, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from Yahweh. All right. So just like today, prime example, you know, I had a few precepts in mind I want to bring out, you know, that was a preparation in my mind, in my heart. But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, you know. We, you know, we bring up, you know, things that, you know, wasn't even prepared in my mind, right? Same thing with the prophets, man. Moses may have had, you know, one thing in his mind to, to tell Pharaoh or to tell the children of Israel, but the Lord prepared Moses' tongue, right? Same thing with, with, with brothers, man, with other brothers. They may, you know, think of ideas or they may think what they're going to say beforehand, but the Lord, through his spirit, is going to actually prepare you, uh, the answer of your tongue. All right. That's right. This is why we say all things are done through spirit. Everything is spiritual, man. Nothing is ever just, you know, uh, from a conjug conjugation of, of, of uh, you know, carnality. Everything is spiritual. All right. Because the Lord controls everything. All right. I'm going um, to uh, read that again. It says, now, therefore, go. Let me go back. It says, now, therefore, go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. All right. And this is going to happen again, man. The Lord is going to teach us what to say, especially in these latter days when brothers get brought up to counsel, you know, to uh, you know, to, to Esau once uh once the accusations of the men of the Lord kind of pass. This is Luke 21, verse 14. Settle it therefore in your hearts. See that? Meditate, basically prepare, like Proverbs 16 says, the preparation of the heart in man, but the answer is from the Lord. It says, settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. So don't think about what you're going to say before you're going to uh, speak, man. He says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, just like he did Moses. All right? He didn't tell Moses that, hey, just, I want you to sit back and meditate and think. You know? Right. You like, like, write it all down first. Yeah. Now, we're not saying there's nothing wrong, you know, especially like when you, you know, do lessons or go out on street corner. That's something different. But when it comes to you know, when the Lord is about to, uh, you know, uh, do something miraculous, like rescuing brothers out of the hands of the courts of Esau or whatever, don't think about what you're going to say when you get delivered up to these people, right? He says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries, see that? This is the connotation of it, when you're delivered into your adversaries, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, save, nor resist, right? They're going to be confounded, <laughs> Why? Because the Lord was speaking directly through you, man. See that? Uh, and this only happens to the ones who he sends, man. Grab this. If you got any precepts out, just let me know. Oh, oh no, I ain't, I ain't got no right now. Kanye, yeah, this is Matthew 10, 19. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. See that? So it's never us. That's why we say everything is spiritual, man. Even if even if a brother says something incorrectly, guess what? Well, the Lord made him speak that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? It could have been for anything. It could have been to humble him. Yep. It could have, you know what I mean? It could have been for edification for somebody else. Sometimes it'd be like that. Like, man. It didn't that, it wasn't that how it was when the the, uh, the disciples seen the brother who was blind from birth, but when the Messiah healed them, he said he was blind from birth just so just so the disciples could bear witness mm. to the Messiah healing them. Mm. Like that I ain't so the Lord the Lord to do that just just so somebody else can bear witness. Hey, that's a fact. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All for edification's sake, man. Really for the elect. Yeah. Cause he says that the election right, right, right. <laughs> and the rest of you blind. Right, right. And that's literally what the Lord did. He literally blinded the brother, healed them, you know, Hamashiach healed them, but it was for the elect, you know, the, the, um, them apostles, obviously, you know, X and out, um, you know, Judas rat face dude, 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So yeah, yeah, we'll go back to 13, Bible. Yeah. Uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 4, and verse 13. And he said, O Yahweh, send, I pray thee, by the hand of, of him whom thou will send. Verse 14. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron? The Levi. Let me get that in the NLT. I'm gonna get uh Salaki. I'm gonna get Exodus four and thirteen in NLT. It says, let me go back. He says, and Moses put again, Lord, <laughs> please send anyone else. See that? Send anyone else, man. That's how Moses felt. He's like, nah, man, this is, this is too great of a mission for me, for a shepherd. Mm -hmm. All right, just send somebody else. I'm not worthy. I can't speak good. You know, these people ain't going to listen to me. <laughs> I just flare from the face of the serpent. Send anybody else but me, right? You go ahead. Verse 14. Come, on, verse 14. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moses. Yep. And, and that's, that's hey, because the Lord said, no, man, I chose you. You telling me that I made a mistake in choosing you? And this is something that, you know, even though, you know, and this is a good mindset to be in, like Moses, you know, like you're not worthy, but we still got to remember that the Lord chose us for a reason. The very fact, you know, that we do what we're doing right now is what we were made for. Nothing else. This was our purpose. You know, just how, just how, uh, you know, someone who makes a computer programs it, you know, to do a particular thing. Well, the Lord programmed your mind, pro program the computer of your person, which would be your brain, to do exactly what it's made to do. And if that computer don't do, or if it's trying to resist what the creator made for it to do, the, the, the creator of it is gonna be gonna be upset, man. You know? So yeah, you go ahead though. Uh kind of um it was kindled against Moses and he said, and he said, it's not Aaron the Levi, thy brother. Mm -hmm. I know that he can speak well. Mm -hmm. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. Come, verse 15. And, and thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. Yep. So just how the most I put the words in Moses' mouth, not Moses, like now the Lord told Moses. Put these same words in your brother's mouth since, since he can speak well. Right. Everything I told you, tell him. All right, going to show you that, hey, the, the message of the Lord <clears throat> it is translated for many different people. You know, that's why we say that we, you know, we, we uh, you know, give appreciation and honor to our elders as well, man. All right, because they put the words that was given unto them through the spirit into our mouth, you know. So you go here. Um, and I will be with thy mouth and will and with his mouth and um and will teach you what ye shall do. Mm -hmm. Come verse 16, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even he shall be thee um, instead of a mouth and thou shall be to him instead of the, uh, instead of God. Yeah, so you see that? So the Lord was basically showing Moses or telling Moses uh, basically the same way how, you know, uh, I'm the most high to you or um, yeah, I'm this, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm God to you and uh and you're the mouthpiece of the most i mean you're the mouthpiece or the, the vehicle or the, or the carrier of the word unto uh, the other people well i'm going to put um you're supposed to put the same words into your brother's mouth right and you'll be unto him uh as as god man right someone who this is someone's message and you gave it to somebody else all right because god just simply means power all right so moses was a power kind of, brother kind of salaki and that and that go with what we was uh, reading too in Numbers. You see, when Aaron called him a uh, Lord, mm -hmm. kind. Yep. It just basically means you know somebody that's over you. You know, 
Yeah. Moses yeah. was over, you know what I'm saying? His uh his brother. So yeah, you got it. Well, it this is verse uh 15. Uh 17. Oh, come verse 17. And thou shalt take this rod in um in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Verse 18. And Moses went and returned to Jephro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Hold Let on, me go. We got earlier, you know what I'm saying? How the truth is likened to a rod and to a staff, man. All right. Well, doesn't the truth perform many different signs for you? All right. <laughs> Just like that rod does. Once again, everything is spiritual, man. All right. And uh, and this truth does what? It leads to sheep, just like a rod does, or a staff. It leads to sheep. See? So yeah, you got it though. Come and um and Moses went and returned unto Jephro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go. I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt. And see whether they be yet alive. And Jephro said to Moses, "Go in peace." See, that's, Verse that's, nineteen. Yeah, that's Moses doing what through faith, you know, going to uh, suffer the affliction of his people, man. All right, but you got it. Come. Verse nineteen. And Yahweh said unto Moses, "In um in Midian, go return unto Egypt." For all the men are dead with sought thy life. Yep. And and who else? What other savior or what other uh deliverer can we equate this to? It's Matthew 2 and 20. All right. Saying, arise and take the young child, which is Yahweh Shah, and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead with sought the young child life. See that? So the Lord always protects. Is a lick from the danger of those men who 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 seeking their life. All right, just how Moses was being sought after, right? Well, Yahweh Shah, our other redeemer, our other savior, you know, to lead us out of spiritual Egypt. See that? <laughs> he was preserved, man. So yeah, we could uh go back to Exodus 2 and 20. Um, Exodus chapter 2, verse 20. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of the Most High in his hand. Verse 21, And Yahweh said unto Moses, When thou goest to return unto Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. But I will harden his heart, oh, that he oh, should not. I will do what? I will harden his heart. Yeah. So, and, and this is another thing Christians can't fathom, man. That the Lord will actually harden someone's heart, man. <laughs> I I heard a Christian when I was in church, man. Um, when I was in Seventh Adventism, and basically he equated this to like uh, how people are clay, and you got uh, the sun outside, right? And how we're all clay. Uh, but because of different situations, uh, some clay might be um, some clay might be under the shade or whatever, and it may not get hardened the same way. It it literally made no sense how this Christian pastor broke it down. He was trying to make an excuse to show how the Lord won't really harden anybody's heart. It was how we're all here in the same situation, and some people's heart will get hardened. No man, the Lord hardens who He wants to harden, and He shows mercy on who right. He shows mercy on. <laughs> it literally says, yeah, yeah, I will harden his heart. All right. And when you read Romans chapter nine, he tells you why. So he would display. Yeah. Let's grab that real quick. Yeah, I was just about to go there. Okay. Bet. Yeah. You can. Kind of, you can read that. Uh, the uh, book of Romans chapter nine and verse 15. For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion. On whom I will have compassion, right? And that's that's it's crazy because like even Moses was looking at it, you know. I mean, like you're the most high God, you created heaven and earth, right? You can just make him let the people go, 
Like, why are you sending all these players? Like, why are you like why are you doing like and he and the most high God had to let Moses know, right? I had compassion on who I wanted. I don't want to have compassion on him. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm toying with him. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing all this so I can be justified in afflicting him. Ooh. Right. <laughs> um, Pharaoh. So um verse 16. So then it is not him that will have. Yeah, you can him. do your way into the most high God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. that's something to look. Hey, and this is actually a, a shot to your pride, a shot to your own works. You know, mm-hmm. some people, even even amongst the circumcised of our people, they think, oh, man, as long as I keep the, the law to a T and do everything, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm going to will myself into the good graces of Yahweh by Shem Well, that's not even because yeah. guess what? When you when you consider the scriptures, guess what? The, even the elect won't be squeaky clean, man. Right? It's all because the Lord chose to show mercy upon them. Right. <laughs> and they're going to be cleansed that way. Right. So you can't will, you can't work your way into the mercy of your Hawaii you have shot. It all has to be predestinated from the foundation of the world. When you read Ephesians chapter one, right? I encourage y'all to read that whole chapter, man. Right. And it basically lays out the framework of the Lord's movie, how he just predestinated before the world's foundation was set up to have compassion and put the spirit upon particular brothers, man, and to give those vessels of mercy that mercy. And this is what makes the, the movie of the mo- of the Lord, which we call life, so interesting. <laughs> you know, because this is the whole time you sitting back, hoping and praying that you're part of that number, man. If you're in the right spirit, some people not even praying for that. Man. You know? So yeah, you can't will it. So lock it up. Uh, con, con, yeah, you yeah, you definitely can uh, will it. You can't try to, you know, I'm I'm gonna do all this. And that way I'm gonna be the 144. That way I'm gonna be a one third. Like it's it's not you can well it's it's it, it, it can seem like it's something that you can do mm-hmm. in the carnal aspect, but it's really not. Yep. I mean, because everything is predestined. So it's, it's really nothing you can you can will because you you can be doing all of this, and it's crazy. Like it can just be the Lord's will that somebody that you can see maybe not even is doing as much as you. <laughs> that the Lord want to use, like, and it's all praises. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. Up, kind of, kind of verse sixteen. Um, so then it is not a him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High who showeth mercy. And that's what it's all about: the Lord showing mercy, man. Right in the time of wrath. Let me let me grab that. Let me grab that. Let me grab that. It's uh, Habakkuk chapter 3 and 2. Oh, Yahweh, I have heard thy speech. Well, what's the Lord's speech? Prophecies. <laughs> and guess what? These are prophecies. His speech is speaking louder and louder until that perfect day right now. He says, I heard thy speech and was afraid. Oh, Yahweh. Revive thy work in the midst of the years. See that? And in the midst of the years, make known. So in the midst of these years, right? Make known what it is, what your prophecies is. He says, in wrath, remember mercy. See that? Let's read that again. He says, in wrath, remember mercy. That's what this whole thing is about. Because guess what? In in, in physical land of Egypt, well, the Lord, he, he, he calls his speech to be heard through the mouth of his prophets, man, right? To, to basically show what? I'm about to wreak havoc upon Egypt, all right? But, the, but Moses was like, in wrath, remember mercy, basically. Deliver us. You see the affliction of our people, all right? That's what this whole thing's about. I'm gonna grab this too, unless you got a precept out. No, come on, no, I ain't had none. Okay, I'm gonna find this real quick. Let's see if I can find this. I want to say it's Sarek. Uh, yep, Sarek 35. Yeah, man. And this is why we do this because this is why we it's so important for us to go, you know, consider the the humble beginnings of our people, if you will, that the history of our people, 
because we understand pursuant to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter one, that history basically repeats itself. Mm -hmm. All right, let me grab this first, Aaron. Romans. Romans 14 and five. Romans 14 and five. And it says, not 14 and five. You know what I'm thinking about? Um, what was that? How'd it go? Um, whatever was written before time. Is that 12? Oh, whatever was written before time was written for a learning today. Yeah, I think that is. Oh, 15. All right. It says, for what? So everything things were written before time. See that? Man, we're, we're, we're reading about the things that was written before time. It says, we're written for our learning that we through patience, you go into that word patience, it just simply means endurance. So us through endurance and comfort of the scripture might have hope. See, that might have hope. This is why we considering all these things, man, of old. And this is Sirach 35, verse 20. He says, I'm going to enlarge it. He says, mercy is seasonable. Woo! Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. It's, a, it's something that's seasonable. That means that it's not around all the time. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. Right? Right. So the very fact that mercy is seasonable means what? Well, you need to hearken to the prophets while they're on the scene. Because when the Lord basically removes the prophets, that's basically the Lord saying, I'm done talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> judgment time. Yeah, it's judgment time. I'm done talking, man. And that's coming up pretty soon in the form of family of the word. See, right now the Lord is speaking loud and clear, man. It ain't no excuse for people not to receive this mercy right now. Right? Some people uh, watching brothers' videos, right? Some people, you know what I'm saying? Not, not, <clears throat> they, they still want to hear from the Lord, but they refuse to listen to the counsel. Like Proverbs 1 and said, 1, uh, 1 and uh, what was that, 20, 26? He says they refuse the counsel of the Lord, and then he's going to laugh and mock at their calamities in the time of destruction. All right. So he says mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction as clouds of rain in the time of drought. See that? Because the word is known as what? Rain. Isaiah 55, he says um, that, the, that the words of the Lord is as rain in the time of drought, in the time of famine of the word. Right. Right, the water is known known as the word known as water. They live in water. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, man. So this is why we're getting all this because we're seeing how the Lord spoke unto the children of Israel before the time of 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 wrath, right? But He showed mercy, right? Because um, eventually they hearkened unto the voice of Moses, right? But this go round, two thirds ain't going to hearken, man. So, uh, we'll go back to Exodus 4 and 21. The book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 21. And Yahweh said unto Moses, when thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand, but I will hearten his heart that he shall not let the people go. All right. Yeah, let's go back to Romans 9 and 6, 17. Because I don't think we fit we finish that out. The book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse uh you said 16? Uh yeah, come. Come. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but the most high that showeth mercy. Verse 17, for the scriptures say unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, hmm. that I might show, show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Here you have it, man. This is why Moses was raised up, for the very intent, for the very purpose, for the Lord to show his wrath and to show his power, so he can make himself right. known. Right. This isn't a foreign idea when we deal with the scriptures. I'm gonna grab this in Proverbs 16 and 4. It says Yahweh made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Right? So the same way how Moses was, was created, right? It's the same reason why Esau was created. 
All right, 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 right. right. It'd be the sword for his people in time of disobedience, and then to also for the Lord. Hey, the Lord is basically, hey, this is game. This is this is his chess game, right? He got pawns, man. The Lord created these people just to show his power. They show how he's flexing. Right. He's flexing the whole time, man. And you gotta love it. God, don't God, love man. It, it don't matter if you love it or not. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> It's, it's get down the lay down. Get down the lay down. You know? Kind of, kind of so like it too. You and you see that it said, like, even for the same purpose that I that I raised up Pharaoh. Now, now who is he comparing Pharaoh to? You you already said it to Esau. Like when you read up further in the in the chapter, because that's that's what, what people would say. What shall we say then? Is God unrighteous? I mean, no, he's not unrighteous. Because like everything has to have a beginning. So you just can't blame him for everything that's right. If he's the beginning of all things, then you have to blame him for everything that's right and wrong, mm -hmm. right? So, so this is for the same reason that he raised up Esau in these last days, right? So the to to the same the, the same thing. If you really look at the story that we're going over in in Exodus and look at it with Esau, it's it's comparable, right? Everybody looking at Esau as a god. Maybe not one particular Edomite. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden or whatnot, they're looking at their races of God, right? They got all the wisdom, right? They got all the understanding, right? They even scared of him. If he pressed the uh button, you know, it'd be over. Nuclear missiles, right? So they 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 scared of him on a physical level. Mm. Right? So that, that the same way that they were scared of Pharaoh. So that's the same reason why the most high God raised up Esau. You know I mean, so he can show his power. Yeah, I mean, matter of fact, look, um, look, look, look at that. Um, uh, I think it's the next verse. Huh. Um, uh, yeah, the, uh, the next verse, yeah, eighteen. Therefore, have he had mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he will hearten. Verse nineteen. Thou will say then unto unto me, um, why does uh, thou yet find fault? For who could resist the Lord's will? Nobody. Yeah. Right. Um. But I want to just drop down to uh, verse 22. What if the Most High willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, right? Because everybody know the power of, of, of Pharaoh, right? Calling him a guy. Everybody know the power of Esau, all his technology, drone missiles, right? Everybody know, but everybody forgetting about the power of God. Like more and more people is becoming atheist, is becoming, you know, planetarious, um, becoming you know, um, what, what what do they call it? Um, people that believe in that uh, dark Darwinism. Oh, you know that we all came from cells. Yeah, you know I mean, so that's what the Most High, the Most High God, want people to fear Him, and He's gonna use a man to make it. So, so when He raised Him to the highest point, to where He can get Him, then He gonna destroy Him. Woo! You know what I'm saying? And then when He destroy Him, and there's nothing you can say now. It, all you can say is, oh, well, I guess that is the true God. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess the white man wasn't the true God. I, I guess, I guess Yahweh had to be the true God. If, if he could beat the white man, he, he had to be the true God. This, this is why he's doing it. That's why. What if the Most High willing to show his, his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction? The Most High God is suffering, not destroying somebody who he said that he wanted to destroy anyway, hmm. right? That's why That's why he said that he's long-suffering because he, he already made a promise to give this man a time period to rule. So now he's suffering because he, he made him to be destroyed. That's why he didn't made him. So he's just, because he, he can't go against his own word because he already said Esau was going to have a time period to rule. So he can't go against himself. So he, he just waiting to destroy who he said he's going to destroy. Hmm. Hmm. Man, that's cold. Yep. <laughs> and, is, and and the reason why he waiting is why? Because the next verse. To make oh, his kind of, kind of. Yep. To make the riches of his glory uh known on the vessels of mercy. Basically, to uh, <laughs> God. God. which he have a four prepared unto glory, which would be unto glory. <laughs> which would be what? The nation of Israel, starting off with this. That's right. You know, so. This is why he's suffering modern. Day. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you continue to go into that, bro. Um, and this is why, like brother said, man, he's long suffering with with uh, with the vessels of destruction, which would be the Edomites. 
right? The, the modern day pharaohs in, in spiritual Egypt. Why? So we can have time, man. So the elect can have time to, to do what? To get sealed. <laughs> That's the riches of his glory, man. Man. Uh, yeah, that, that, bro. I'm, yeah, bro. Hey, Romans 9 is a powerful chapter. We bring it up all the it, time. It really is. You can it, keep it, it really is a powerful chapter, though. Like, it, re it really is the, oh. the whole chapter. God. Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, where are we at? Oh, verse 22. Uh, the, book of, the book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith Yahweh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Hold up. Hold up, right? <laughs> so we understand that uh, uh, Esau is modern day Pharaoh or spiritual Egypt. Well, he's, tearing, he's telling Esau, hold on. Israel's my son, my firstborn, right? Because there's something special about being the firstborn, right? Well, that means that you're going to receive the inheritance. So this goes to show you that the whole time, the Lord already had a plan that Israel was to receive the inheritance. Because we're the firstborn. Yes, although on a, on a carnal level, Esau was the firstborn. Well, the Lord bypassed his ass, man. Because on a spiritual level, mm -hmm. we're, the, we're the spiritual firstborn. And this is why we were kind of in it. What do you say, y'all? Oh, oh no, Salaki, I, I, I was gonna say, and that's and that's for the knuckleheads who want to think carnal because you you was just already going into it. Like, hold on, I thought Israel was the youngest nation. No, he talking about spiritually, mm -hmm. and that's why he said that we was the firstborn because we were spiritually before all these nations in the heavenly realm before even coming to, onto this earth. Uh, that's it. Consider our Lord Yahweh Shah. You know, right. firstborn. He was the first created of the Most High, and then he. Through Yahweh Shah, everything else was made. Well, this is why Yahweh right. Shah is going to be the king of kings. And he just divides the spoil with his brethren, with his Akim. But he get the That's cheap, right. He get the cheapest part, man. You know, because he's the firstborn from his father. So, so this goes to show you that, man, this is all, this was all rigged. And you gotta love it. <laughs> gotta love it. Oh. Grab this in Hosea, unless you got a precept, brother. Oh, oh no, oh no, but 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 if you see it said that we're we're the son. So you know, once once our people can get off of drugs, stop being whoremongers, right? Stop being I idolatrous, right? And yeah, I mean stop worshiping idols. As once we can start doing that, then we can call ourselves a son of God. Right. right? Then we can once we start serving the Lord in sincerity and truth, right? Then we can be a son of God. Yeah. Right? Because because people, you know. Oh, uh, oh, Jesus, the only son of God. Yeah, he's the first begotten of the father, but he had he had children after. Him, mm -hmm. Right. Yasharala. That's right. Yeah, this Hosea 11 and 1. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. See that? He called his son out of Egypt. You know? And how does he call his son out of Egypt? <clears throat> Through the spirit. All through the spirit. Let's grab this. This is Galatians 4. Galatians 4 and 6. And because ye are sons, Yahweh sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. Just like the brother was saying. All right. You'll be a son once you get yourself off uh off from serving. You know the, the 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 will of the Gentiles, you know, and drugs or Christianity, which Christianity is a drug, <laughs> right, you know? right, or Islam or any other thing, man. Right, he's going to send forth that spirit, right, and adopt you as his son. So you'll be no longer, therefore, a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of Yahweh through Hamashiach. See that? Then you'll be an heir. Uh, heir just sim simply means someone that. That, that's uh, a, a ruler, right? You're a co-ruler, you're joint heirs with the Mashiach Yahweh Shah, because he's sharing his kingdom. See that? Turn, I, I got one preset, but that was that was a pretty powerful one though, but I, I, I got this one on. Yeah, bring it's him out. Book right. John. It's the book of First John chapter three and verse 10. Mm -hmm. um, and this, the children of the most high are made manifest. Why? 
how the children of the Most High God made manifest? Because we do, we're doing what he told us to do, right? What he told our forefathers to do, right? We're loving him and we're loving the brethren, right? Um, And the children of the devil, mm. right? So, I mean, so our spiritual heavenly father, he, he got children and the spiritual demon Satan, he got children, man, right? Um, who, Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not a God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And we see that with Cain, right? The uh, the regeneration of Cain was Esau, right? And I mean, like, and, 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 and like how the scriptures say, the, none of these nations can do righteousness. Like none of these nations can um, uphold the law. I think that's in what? Second Ezra? Second Ezra um, uh, 3? Yeah, 3 and 33 or 3 and 36, something like that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. You can't make something yeah, crooked, but the Lord made crooked. None of them uh, has kept the law. Right? Uh, Let me see if I can find this. Oh, it is. Oh, it is uh, that uh, the book of Second Ezra, chapter three and verse thirty-six. Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathens. Right? They can't do it. <laughs> Even if they wanted to, they can't. It's just not in any spirit. Like look, like like look at the Moabites, right? All they women all on YouTube eating turtlenecks and <laughs> right rats and bats and all this. Reptiles and it's crazy, like exactly, exactly. Yep, yeah. This uh, land back off what the brother's saying. Jeremiah thirteen twenty three. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Yeah, them people black. Mm -hmm. All right, he says, mm -hmm. when the leopard his spots, then may you also do good that are accustomed to do evil. So yeah, man, mm -hmm. Ethiopian, you can't change his skin. Nor can a leopard change his spot. So if the Lord created something to, to look like something and to and to be something, well, that's what he created it for. All right. So this is how the children of God are made manifest, right? Through the works that they display. You being a son of God is displayed by the works that you manifest, man. That's why Yahweh Shah even said in John chapter five, he says, if you don't believe who I and I'm paraphrasing, he says, if you don't believe who I say I am. At least let the works speak for myself or speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. See that? Because your works bear fruit, bear witness of you. That's why he says that you shall know a tree by the fruit it produces. Uh, uh. And all also in John 8, when he says, I know that you say you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Yet if you were Abraham's seed, you would uh do the uh you were uh let me let me go and get that man. So I'm butcher it. He can say it better than I can. It's John 8. And uh, yep, John 8 and 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahweh Shah said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, all right, you would do the works of Abraham. See that? You do the works of Abraham. And what was the works of Abraham? Genesis 26. Abraham. Kept the charge of the Lord and his laws and that's right. Yeah. So yeah, bro. Um, so yeah, that's the importance of being the firstborn, right? And this goes straight that the Lord already had to set it up. He set it up. The Lord already had to set up for the nation of Israel to be the firstborn to get that inheritance, man. Right. See, man, see, man, see. I I told you we can speak the bonnets for our people, man. Yep. <laughs> Set it up. <laughs> hey man, he, he ain't sent us to a people of a hard speech, man. We 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 know how to get down with all this this slang. You know what I mean, this join. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? you know get down with all that, man. Exactly, exactly, bro. So yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's pick back up in verse twenty three. Con the book of Exodus chapter four and verse twenty three. And I say unto thee, let my son go. Yeah. That he come. <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying the same thing that today, man. Is. Yeah, exactly. Hey, let my son go, man. You know, he's saying the same thing today. This is why he rose up prophets in spiritual Egypt. All right. We tell him, we telling Esau, let us go. Right. right. We, tired of, we tired of being held, uh, um, 
captive up under you know your uh your your taxes you know your legislations your laws all right but we understand how the lord is actually going to redeem us this time or well, at least those who was given to which you start be starting with the elect we understand that yahweh shah is going to be the one to let us go to break the bonds of our captivity off our shoulders man right and it's also that like he says let my son go that he may serve me that's why and in particular the way how we serve him is what sacrifices and guess what? If the Lord don't get his sacrifice, guess what? Somebody gonna get put to death. Right. <laughs> he gonna get it one way or another. Yep, he gonna get that sacrifice. He gonna get that glory. So either you let us go or he gonna wreak all, all that hell on this place, man. Which he will do, which he did in times past. But yeah, you go ahead, though. Uh, verse 23. And, and I said unto thee, let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. You see that? Mm -hmm. He gonna get that sacrifice. If you don't let my son go and give me sacrifices, I'm gonna sacrifice you. I'm gonna sacrifice your son. Let me grab that real quick. What was that, Zephaniah? I wanna say Zephaniah 1. Okay. Might be Zachariah. One. I always get those two confused. Um, hmm. Well, we can also get this in Isaiah 34. I'm gonna have to find that one later. Uh, Yep, this Isaiah 34 and 6. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For Yahweh had a sacrifice where? In Basra. See that? And Basra is what? Basra is the Edomite territory. Wherever these people at, this is this is Basra, man. This is Idumia. So guess what? The Lord had a sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? In, in, in physical Egypt. So he's going to have another sacrifice in spiritual Egypt. Why? Because they won't let his people go and go serve him, sacrifice unto him. It says, for Yahweh have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. See that? There's going to be a great, great slaughter. slaughter. <laughs> a great slaughter for that great whore. For Babylon right. the Great. <laughs> huh. See? Needs she, she needs something great just to go along with her. Exactly, because he's all about balance. Yep. So yeah, yeah, we go back to what? Kind of, uh, kind of the book of Exodus chapter four and verse twenty four, and it came to pass by the way, in the in the end, that that Yahweh met him. And sought to kill him. Woo! And this goes to show you how serious the Lord is, man. And he's he's talking about Moses. After right. all this, right? Now the Lord is he's <laughs> he's thinking about killing Moses. Why? Uh verse 25. Then Zephariah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. Uh -huh. Verse 26. So he let him go. Then said, then us like it. Then she said, A bloody husband art thou because of the uh circumcised. See? So the Lord, right? The Lord was about to slay. Let me get this in the NLT. He was about to slay Moses, man. Right? Because um the Lord is establishing how important it is. For uh, for this particular uh, custom of our sac uh, circumcision, man, right? It's Exodus four and twenty four in NLT. On the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, Yahweh confronted him and was about to kill him. But Moses' wife Zipporah took a flint knife and circumcised his son. See, the Lord wants blood, man. This is how he is appeased. <laughs> He's appeased through sacrifice and blood, man. She touched his feet. 
with the foreskin and said, now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. See that? Because the Lord, once again, like we said, he wants blood, all right? He says, when, he, when she said a bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, Yahweh left him alone. So the Lord wants what he wants, and he'll he'll leave he'll leave you alone. All right, when it comes to you know that wrath. All right, let me just grab this in Jeremiah four and four. Circumcise yourselves to Yahweh and take away the foreskins of your heart. See that? Right then it was talking about the the uh, the fleshly foreskins of, of the of the penises, right? But on a spiritual note, right? The Lord is commanding us to, to take away or to circumcise our hearts, meaning to circumcise your minds, right? He says, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, unless my fury come forth like fire. See that? <laughs> so going to show you, even if you don't circumcise your mind, the Lord's fury is going to be kindled up against you. See that? It says, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. See that? So the Lord was establishing the importance of the physical circumcision and the spiritual circumcision, which would be your mind. Because either or, the Lord is going to be wroth with you, man. All right? So, yeah, you had a point out? Oh, oh no, I ain't had no point. Okay, bit, bit. Yeah, let's uh let's skip down verse uh verse uh 28. Uh, the book of uh Exodus chapter 4 and verse 28. Uh, and Moses 27, my bad, 27. Oh, come, come, verse 27. And Yahweh said um to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mountain of the most high and kissed him. Verse 28, and Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahweh who had sent him yeah. and all the signs. Yep, so that's, that's Moses putting the words, you know, into uh, Aaron's mouth. You go ahead. Done. And all the signs which he had commanded him. Verse 29, and Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. Verse 30, and Aaron spoke all the words which Yahweh had spoke unto Moses and did the signs, um, and did the signs in the sight of the people. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. And the people believed, and when they heard that you Yahweh have had visited, there you have it. And uh, the people believed when they heard, right? This is how. Mm -hmm. Our faith is built up through through sin. Then here, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, there you have it. Yeah. It's Romans. It's Romans ten and seventeen. So then, faith or what? Faith, faith or belief cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. This is why it's important for us to speak. Thus saith the Lord, just like Moses and, and Aaron did, right? So when we speak. Your faith will be built up, man. Right? Because it's, it's important for you to believe so you can do what? Escape the miseries and the torments for these heathens. Right? If you don't have faith in, in what you're listening to and what you're hearing, well, guess what? You're going to die the death of an infidel. You're going to die the death of what was prepared for Esau and these other heathens. I said being missiles. Even if you make it to, that's, that's fast forward. And even if you make it to that point. The Lord can have your ass down a car wreck all because you didn't believe and have faith in, in the words of his uh, of his prophecies. Sure. This is uh, Ephesians. I'm going to read that again in Exodus, Exodus uh, 4 and 31. And the, and the people believed and when they heard, see that? When they heard, they believed when they heard this Ephesians 1 and 13. In whom you also trusted or believed, you see that? In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth. Yeah, because how can you believe, right, if you ain't never heard something? All right. Hey, I, would you have believed in, in the in knowing that you were Israelite if you never heard that? Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, like how? Yeah, how? How would I had had known? Because we was all born, basically born blind. Exactly. That's that. Exactly. That's why he said it. Also, in Romans chapter ten, how can they believe unless there be a preacher? <laughs> See, so this is how people want to ultimately ultimately believe, right? Through the signs and powers of the Most High, and also through someone telling them, right? He says, "In whom you also trusted, after that you have heard the word of the truth." What and what's that word? The truth. It says this: the gospel or the good news of your salvation. See that? In whom also after that you believed. So after you after you listen, then you trust, and then after you trust, he says what? You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Then again, there goes that sealing of the elect. See that? And uh, yeah, man. So yeah, let's go back to Ephesians 4 and 31. Uh, the book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 31. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahweh had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshiped. Mm -hmm. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped because that's the right spirit to be in. That's the only spirit you can be in once you truly figure out that the Lord is fighting for you, man. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you know, boast around and say, oh yeah, man, we got this. No, you're gonna be like, thank you. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shah. Right? You're gonna say that with your with your face toward the ground. All right, let me grab this in Hosea 12 and 12. He says, and Jacob, uh, nah, Hosea 12 and 13. And by a prophet, see that? Yahweh brought Israel out of Egypt. See that? By a prophet. Who was that prophet? Moses. And this is how we're going to be brought out of this spiritual land, Egypt. He says, and by a prophet was he preserved. Woo! So by a prophet were we brought out of Egypt and by the, that same prophet were we preserved. Why? Because you're, uh, when you take heed unto the words of that prophet, You'll be preserved. You'll save your life. Let me get this in Psalms 19. Psalms 19, verse 11. Moreover, by them, speaking of the of, of the of the Lord's uh warnings of prophecies, moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. See that? In keeping these prophecies and keeping these warnings, you're gonna be rewarded, which would be your life being preserved. See that? So yeah, you got any closing remarks on chapter four? Uh, man, uh, no, I don't have any exactly. Okay, con, con. So yeah, that that concludes uh Exodus chapter four Passover series. Uh, what we're probably gonna do is probably gonna end it off here, and uh, so the video won't be too long, so we can uh head in chapter five, but we're gonna end it off on here. So um, you know, hope this video is edifying. Till next time, shalom. Shalom.